Uh, Darius. Darius. I'm saying it right? Darius. Darius. Darius Rajali is with us. He is a professor of political science at Reed College, uh, and and which is which is great. I mean, you're 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 local. Great to have you here in the studio with us, sir. You are also the author of Torture and Democracy, which is uh, rapidly becoming a best-selling book, and uh, it has been by many reviewers uh, uh, well uh, defined as the seminal book on torture, on the history of torture and the relationship of torture to democracy in the United States. Uh, Darius, welcome to the show. Well, it's very nice to be here. Or, or Dr. Ranjali. Uh, oh, no, Darius, please. Or professor. We, we or, live in Oregon. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. But we're broadcasting worldwide. It's so true. It's, uh, you know, I, I don't want to minimize your credentials, which are solid. And, and, and uh, before we get into, you know, what, you know all, the, all the obvious media kind of at the fluff level stuff, I, I want to drill a lot deeper than that in the conversation that we're going to have today and also bring our listeners into this conversation. Our toll-free number, 866-987-THOM, which is uh, 987-8466, and uh, also seven, uh, in the 503 area code, 796-2324 for those people calling from outside the United States. And if you want to drop into our live chat room, I'm in there. You can go to TomHartman.com. It's free, our live video stream, and, and Darius is, uh, yeah, Darius is uh, visible on the camera. I, you know, hopefully everything's working right. And uh, so we're here together. But I, I want to get into this issue of torture and democracy. First of all, you got into this because, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, your father is Iranian. That's er, correct. And your grandfather was Iranian royalty. Aristocracy. Aristocracy, yeah. and was involved in torture. Well, not my grandfather, per se. Um, there's an aristocratic side and there's a royal side. Right. Uh, my great-grandfather was uh, uh, a member of the royal family uh, in the 19th century, mm -hmm. and um, growing up as part of my childhood, um, understanding their stories, understanding what they did, um, they were certainly not above uh, torturing or killing large numbers of people um, who they considered to be terrorists. So I kind of came in through this through the back door. I, I'm not a victim per se, I, right. although I've had relatives who've been in prison and yeah. during the Shah in the, in the 20th century. Um, but uh, I, I guess you could say that I developed a, a capacity to hear incredibly dark stories, hang out with people who've done terrible things, have beer with them, mm -hmm. and understand and try and, and try and get their perspective, mainly yeah. your relatives. And that turned out to be a skill that stayed with me f with life, for and, life. And, yeah. and, and thus, in, in, your, in your new book, Torture and Democracy, you have written the definitive uh, I mean, this this goes back to uh, torture back uh, virtually to the beginning of of uh, I don't want to say civilization, but uh, modern society. Certainly. Yeah, I I actually kind of say that I'm a the expert on modern government torture and interrogation because there are other great experts on mm -hmm. say the Inquisition or right. ancient. But um, I I decided that um, well you know the study of modern torture really has three sides to it. What are the torturers? Who are they? Where do they come from? What happens to the victims, mm -hmm. and what's the history of the techniques? Right. And so um, the the first two were well done, but the last one really needed a, a solid study. And so I spent the last thirteen years working on this long before anyone was really interested in torture. I'm curious. W one of the things that has not been touched upon in our media, nobody has gone near this, with the exception of one uh, one day, one news cycle in the Jose Padilla story. Uh, was that he had been turned into basically a piece of furniture. Mm. He was incapable of communicating with his own counsel. Uh, he didn't believe that they were actually his lawyers. He thought he was still engaged in an interrogation process even when he was in court. Um, he he was... Uh, broken is not the right word to describe this man. He has been converted into something other than who he was and perhaps arguably other than a fully uh, functional human being. And uh, we, uh, and again, another story that just kind of flew through the news cycle for about an hour, three or four days ago, is that uh, Al uh, is, I'm, I'm forgetting I'm forgetting my um, uh, people who got tortured. Zabaya, uh, Abu Zubaydah, uh, Abu Zubaydah, thank you, uh, has lost bladder function, lost, yeah. lost control of his bladder function. In other words, he uh, the, the smallest thing frightens him, and he pees his pants. That's right. And um, what what is the consequence of the kind of torture that these these people have been subjected to at the hands of the United States government with your and my tax dollars? 
Well, um, let me explain that uh, there are many consequences to being subjected to torture, either physical or the kinds of things that we now call not torture, whatever you want to call yeah. them. Um, but uh, the predictor of why people behave this way is that they uh, perceive a lack of control. There are people who can be whipped and beaten and broken many times as long as they have a strong sense of where they are and who they are and their sense of control. Um, then they don't develop post-traumatic stress disorder symptoms. Mm -hmm. um, and then on the other side, um, if you have no perception of control, uh, this is the strongest predictor that you're going to develop these symptoms. One of the things that shows up in the memos, particularly in the Bradbury memos, um, is they go through the pre-interrogation process where they describe how the whole goal is to induce a condition of learned helplessness. That is to say, to completely uh, make it clear to the detainee that they have no control even over the most basic functions of their lives. Right. Once you get into that condition, um, post-traumatic stress disorder is very common. It's not the only consequence. One other consequence that's related to this presumably is, um, you know, when you meet lawyers, um, and this is a problem for any Gitmo detainee, mm -hmm. um, everybody they've met up to that point has hurt them. Um, and so they have no reason to trust anyone called right. federal anything, even right. if these people are there to defend them. Right. Marty, Marty Seligman, I believe. Uh, yes, that's right. Marty, Sel was Marty Schiff. Yeah. yeah um, he, in fact, I quoted him at length in one of my books, and, and he came up with the idea of learned helplessness and, and also of learned empowerment, as it were. He mm -hmm. actually wrote a very optimistic book about this, the title of which uh, is, is, uh, has long ago escaped me, but, uh, but was brilliant. And and ha he referred to these studies with dogs, where they would put a dog in in a th there would be two two boxes next to each other with, li with a little platform between the two that was large enough for the dog to hop from one to the other, and they'd give the dog an electric shock, and he'd yelp, and he'd jump into the next box and be safe. Uh, but when they put a, a harness on the dog so that he couldn't, you know, that kind of held him up where his feet were just touching the bottom where he'd get the shock, but he was incapable of jumping, and then shocked him over and over again. At a certain point. The dog got it that he was helpless. He learned that he was helpless. And then they took away the harness, and they'd give the dog the shock, and he was perfect, perfectly capable of jumping to the next box, and he never did. He would just sit there and whimper and just take the shock, take the shock, take the shock. And, and what they found was that even, you know, a year later, two years later, I mean, the, 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 the saddest part of this whole story was the follow-up studies. These dogs are broken for life. That's right. There was and, nothing left. And that's also true for... Um, for humans. For humans. The... Um, they used to, in the 1970s, talk about creating uh, centers for rehabilitation. Right. Uh, but now we don't even talk about rehabilitation. We talk about living with what happened to you. The other important point to make here is that um, the SEER program always gives people an opportunity to say no at the right. worst moment. Right. But when you're there's under a safe torture, word, essentially. It, yeah, there's a yeah. safe word, just like any SNM program, too. There yeah. are also safe yeah. words. Yeah. But in torture, there's no escape. And so the conditions of learned helplessness happen, and people really are broken for life. You can't even treat them. For example, people who are subjected to waterboarding or things like that, they can't take showers. So even treatments. Um, for physical damage that they've received, even the doctors can't really help them sometimes. Wow, that's incredible. Um, I, I want to get into you know what's what's going on with this administration. By the way, breaking news: Arlen Specter has just announced he's going to become a Democrat, and that I'm sure will become uh, part of our topic, particularly in our second hour as we get into the uh, Democratic and Republican strategies over the years, and you know what they've been doing and what they're up to. Uh, but but uh, I want to I want to stay with torture here for this hour. Uh, Darius Rajali is with us. He is the author of a brilliant book, Torture and Democracy. And what's the subtitle of the book? I'm sorry, I don't have a copy in front of me. I don't think there is a subtitle. Oh, okay. Pretty well, much. Therefore, the, the, the demand, the supply, does it work? <laughs> yeah. and, and why? How did we get here? There you go. <laughs> and 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 we're gonna th we're gonna get back to to torture and, and how it works and bring you in on the conversation. We'll be right back. 16 minutes past the hour.